Quack! 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 Hey everyone, welcome to the ranking. Here is my ranking for all the Mighty Ducks movies. Yes, the Mighty Ducks. Who grew up with the Mighty Ducks? Raise your hand if you grow up with the Mighty Ducks. I can't see your hand, but still. Raise your hand anyways. If you just raise your hand right now, you're pretty amazing. But yeah, I grew up with the uh, the Mighty Ducks movies. I loved these movies as a kid. They have huge nostalgia for me. And yeah, they're a bit dated now and a bit cheesy, but... I still enjoy watching them. Again, nostalgia, I grew up these movies, and I thought it would be a pretty good idea to rank these films. Well, it wasn't really my idea. Yes, a buddy of mine, Adam Daly from Almost Sideways, he did a ranking of the Mighty Ducks films. He did all four films, including the animated movie, and yeah, he did a ranking, I watched his video, I'm like, man, that was a good video, and damn, why didn't I think of this? I do a lot of rankings and top ten lists, and I never thought of ranking the Mighty Ducks films. What the fuck's wrong with me? But yeah, thank you to my man, Adam Daly from A Little Sideways, for making me think of this ranking. Like, this sounds awesome. So yeah, thank you, Adam Daly. Hashtag evolution. We're taking over Rotten or Fresh. But yeah, still, so let's get to it. Here's my ranking of all four of the Mighty Ducks films, in my opinion, from my least favorite to my favorite. All right, let's get started. Coming at number four is the Mighty Ducks movie, uh, The First Face-Off. Yes, The First Face-Off. This is the animated film and stuff. This, like, premiered with the show. It was, like, the first few episodes and the movie and shit like that. I'm going to just say this right now, and I think a lot of people would know this if you watched my ranking of the Disney Afternoon TV shows. I grew up in the Disney Afternoon. I love the Disney Afternoon. And the Mighty Ducks it premiered on the Disney Afternoon. And it's not. It's not good, the show. I did not like it. It was not for me. And... I was at the perfect age group to watch it, too, but I just never liked it and stuff. I liked other shows on the Disney Afternoon, like Darkwing Duck, DuckTales, Chippendales, Rescue Rangers, even the freaking Gummy Bears, Gargoyles was my favorite and shit like that, but did not like uh, DuckTales. Uh, DuckTales. I didn't like the Mighty Ducks. I love DuckTales. Uh, I didn't like the Mighty Ducks or Quack Pack or Schnookums and Meat, those kind of stuffs. Those, those were always the weaker shows of the Disney afternoon, but the Mighty Ducks, I just... And I loved the movies, and just, I couldn't get into the shows. Just, like, these animated ducks in this planet that's full of hockey, asteroids, and all that are pucks and stuff. You got the villains, played by Tim Curry and Tony Jay, and that's pretty cool. But still, just, I could never get into it. It just was not for me. It just I did not like the show, and I couldn't get invested with the characters and stuff. And it just wasn't for me, but yeah, I saw the movie, obviously. It's the show and stuff, and... It's not good. It's exactly how I feel about the show. I just I, I don't like these characters. I can't get into this story. It's, just, it's a little ridiculous for me, and it has nothing to do with the actual Mighty Ducks movies and stuff. And when I, when this show was coming out, I thought like, oh, it's an animated version of the actual movie in a show that sounds awesome. Not at all. It's it's just not for me. I don't like the animation. I don't like the characters, and just, it's not for me. Even when I was a kid, I never liked it. And yeah, it's the worst Mighty Ducks movie. Coming in at number three is D3, The Mighty Ducks. Um, I don't think this is a great sequel, actually. And, yeah, again, I have a lot of nostalgia for this film and stuff. And I watched this a lot as a kid because that's how I thought high school kids acted like. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, but the reason I don't like this movie all that much, I still have nostalgia for it. And if I binge watch the three Mighty Ducks films, I definitely watch it in when I marathon it and everything. But... It's the weakest because it changes a lot of the characters, and it makes them so unlikable and stuff. And also, there's no co Coach Bar Barton Bombay. There's no Bombay. Like, where's Gordon Bombay? Like, he is the heart and soul of the film. He's the main character in all these movies, and he's literally in the beginning, and then he's in the third act to help Charlie, and then he's at the, the game, and he just stands in the audience and goes, that's all he has. Like, it's Gordon Bombay. He's the character we followed through in the first two films, and he's barely in this film. Even when you look at the cover of D3, The Mighty Ducks, it says starring Amelia Estevez. His name's the first name. I'm like, how is he the first? He's even on the cover. Why? He's not even a main character. He's not even the 12th main character. Charlie's the main character in this film, played by Joshua Jackson. I like Joshua Jackson as an actor. 
I grew up with a lot of this stuff because I grew up on Dawson's Creek. I don't want to wait for our lives to be over. Not a good show. Not the greatest show. I watched it for Joshua Jackson and Michelle Williams and stuff. But yeah, I watched it a lot. My sister loved it. But yeah, I had some, it was, there were some good episodes. But still, uh, I think Joshua Jackson is a good actor. And he was great in Fringe and stuff. He does play in some pretty good films. He's a good Canadian actor. I just didn't like him that much in this film. It's not his fault. It's just how he was written. He was so bratty, so unlikable, and just he whines and bitches a lot. And he's not the Charlie that we know from the first two films, who was such a sweet kid, such a such a likable character and stuff. And, and he's just he loves hockey so much and stuff, and he cares for his friends. And this one, he just abandons his friends and stuff, and he is a little stuck in the past. I get why he's angry at the new coach. Speaking of that, that new coach, I can't stand him. Coach O'Ryan. Yes, go team! Enough of that. Like, what a dick. He's such a jackass, and can't stand him as a character, Coach O'Ryan. Yes, I know they try to, and there's a scene when they try to make him, make you feel bad for him and stuff, but I'm like... That still doesn't give him a right for treating a lot of these people like dirt and stuff. And he treats Charlie like shit. And he's such an asshole. And I, he's a decent coach. I give him that. He's a pretty good hockey coach. But he's still kind of an asshole and stuff. And I just didn't like his character. He was no Coach Bombay. And yeah... It, the, it, the movie's all the characters and high school and stuff, and this high school, even that's not done right. It's just full of these, like, douchey bullies and stuff. Yeah, they're the the warriors and stuff, and yeah, I, just, I didn't like that. Yeah, I don't even like what they did with Banks in the film. Like, he joins the, the varsity team, then he joins their team at the ending. I'm, I'm like, that's confusing and stuff, and... The only thing that was really funny in this film, because a lot of the jokes, none of them really work, and... The only, the only jokes that did work were the scenes with Goldberg, and he's trying to make uh, Julie the cat, he's trying to make her, like, chubby and out of shape and stuff, because she becomes the, the goalie on the team, and he's now the backup goalie. So he's basically trying to make her sick and try to get her out of shape so he can be the goalie again and stuff, and it's really funny. It's actually very funny. And those were the funny parts and the highlights of the film. And the scenes with Emilia Estevez, which he's barely in, but yeah, those were the highlights of the film. The film itself, I just, I didn't like. It is corny and dated, but just, it has a lot of unlikable moments, and it changed the characters that I know and love, and yet... Yeah, it, was, it wasn't a great sequel, and yeah, it's definitely the weakest sequel, and yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of it. I have nostalgia for it, but it's not that great. Conan number two is D2, The Mighty Ducks. Yes, D2. This, this is a proper sequel to The Mighty Ducks. And yeah, again, it's, it's dated, it's cheesy, it's corny, but it's so much fun. Especially if you love hockey, and you love The Mighty Ducks. This is such a fun film. Yeah, even though they're, they're not the Mighty Ducks in this film, they're Team USA and stuff. And the stakes are so much higher in this film because they're representing the United States and stuff in the Hockey League, and they're fighting against Iceland. And they're not as douchey as the douchebags in D3 and stuff. Iceland is actually kind of intimidating team and stuff. And yeah, I didn't mind what they did with Team Iceland in this film. It wasn't as douchey as they did in D3, but... And again, Gordon Bombay is the main character in this film, and the way they, what they do with him in this film, like, he has to handle fame and stuff, and he doesn't, he handles it very poorly and stuff, and he almost becomes kind of a dick and stuff. He's focused so much on winning and not focused on having fun and stuff, but that's his character arc, because the fame gets to his head and stuff, and he focuses too much on winning and stuff, and he learns that hockey is about fun and being with the people that you care about, playing this fun game and stuff, and yeah, it's a beautiful character arc, and I loved Emilio Estevez in this film. He was great. I even loved his little romance with the girl in this movie. It was actually pretty cute and stuff, and it introduced a lot of the new characters, you know, like Fulton, no, not Fulton, uh, Oh my god, uh, not Fulton. Fulton's been in all of them. Uh, the other Bash brother, uh, Deportman. Deportman, uh, Julie the Cat, uh, 
a lot of great characters in this one. Oh, Russ, yes, it's knuckle puck time. It's so great. And there's a lot of great comedy in this movie. It's got a great soundtrack. And, you know, it's just a good time. This movie's just a fun time. And, again, I loved watching this as a kid. I had the VHS tapes of all three films. And I always loved watching this film. And, yeah, again, the stakes are so much higher. And the final uh, hockey scene uh, when they fight against Iceland, really intense match. And, yeah, just, it's, it's just a delightful film. It's cheesy. It's delightful, though. And my number one favorite Mighty Ducks movie is, of course, The Mighty Ducks. The Mighty Ducks, again, just like all of them, it's cheesy. It's very dated at times. There's at times, there's a lot of moments in this film that is strictly for kids because it's a Disney film. But I love this movie the most. It has the most nostalgia for me. And this is the one I watched the most because I just, I... I don't know, something about it, it's just so pure, it's just so innocent, it's just so heartwarming, it's just so much fun, it's very funny at times and stuff, and honestly, I still think it's actually technically the best made film. It actually has some pretty good filmmaking, good performances, and actually some good atmosphere in the film. It's still, again, corny and stuff, but I love, uh, again, his character, Gordon Bombay's character. He's the heart and soul of this franchise, that's why he, he's not in D3, it's so dumb, but anyways, uh... In this one, he's like a hot shit lawyer and stuff, and then he has to get community service, and then he has to coach this hockey team and teach the kids how to play some hockey. And I love when he first becomes the coach. He basically teaches all the kids to lose every game and stuff, and it's very, very funny and stuff. He's just like, yeah, just throw every game that we have and stuff, and it's really funny. But then you go into more of the backstory of Gordon Bombay and his, his, his asshole coach and stuff, and yeah. And he always wanted to be a very good hockey player, but he never pursued that dream a dream of his and stuff. But then he meets Charlie, and then he starts, like, talking about hockey again. He wants to do hockey again. Then he meets his old coach, his nice coach, uh, uh, Hans, and that's such a great scene. That scene is so good. It's not only wonderfully shot, but it has a lot of great atmosphere. And Emilio Estevez, and the, uh, the guy who plays Hans, the performances by both of them are amazing, especially in the scene when he goes to see his old coach, and it is fantastic. Such a well-acted, well-shot, and very atmospheric scene, and I love it. That's, like, my favorite scene in all the Mighty Ducks films. Such a good scene. And again, a lot of the hockey sequences are really great. This is when they came out with the flying V and stuff. Really cool, and yeah. And it's, uh, it's, it's intense, too, and, like, uh, the, the final shootout when Charlie has to do the penalty shot to win the game, really intense and stuff. You know exactly what's going to happen, but it's still really good, and you're just still gripping your hands. You're like, oh, my God, please make the shot and stuff, and, yeah, it's just a really good time. It's just a heartwarming film, and, it, again, it has the most nostalgia for me, and I still think, hands down, this is the best Mighty Ducks film. D2 is really good, but the first one is my favorite. So yeah, that was my ranking of all four of the Mighty Ducks films, or three, including the animated film. But yeah, this is my ranking of all of them. So yeah, comment section below, please tell me, did you agree with this ranking? If not, give me a ranking of all four of the Mighty Ducks films in your opinion, from your least favorite to your favorite. Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you this video, please like, subscribe to this channel, and join the Duck side.